we're digging into a set of four American Survival Guides from uh, the 90s. And let's see, we've already looked at this one. We've already looked at this one. So we're going to look at one of these two. Heads, it's this one. Tails, it's this one. All right, it'll be this one. It is from 1999. So it's that kind of party. Wow, just from 1995 to this 1991, depending on what order you're watching these, look how amazing the GPS got in four years. So uh, this one, you can win a Rhino. Wait a minute. No, that's not. doesn't say nothing about winning it, right? It just says Rhino. Desert Rhino 50 BMG. A bolt-action BMG that looks like it's 16 inches long. I'm all about that. This is in 1999. This is before Y2K. I bet you this is going to be an interesting one, except for it says Blizzard Basics on the front. So it's about cold camping or something. Coping with cold or camping with extreme conditions. Talks about winning that Garmin GPS 3, building an alcohol stove, stocking your survival pantry, alternate first aid for sores, violent people, know when to expect an assault, winter driving, and 10 deadly knife fighting sins. So we're going to dig in. This one you can see I bought in 1998. How did I do that? Somehow I bought this in December of 98, and it's a January 1999 copy. So did somebody get it ahead of time, and then I bought it as soon as they sold it? Or is this a time warp, and I'm not supposed to talk about that on video anymore? Whatever. This might be erased. You may or may not remember you heard that. On the back, we've got a, or an ad for $3,000 worth of food that comes in cans, and it's all Texas chili. So $3,000 worth of Texas chili in cans. That was Y2K for you. $3,000 for a year's worth of chili. We're going to open it up. we got major surplus, a whole bunch of emergency food, MREs, fake MREs. That's the first opening full-color ad. Now we get a, a shot of, what is this? Some sort of mountains out west uh, in the snow. American Survival Guide, what is this saying? 20th anniversary or something? American Survival 20 Years Guide. So it must be saying 20 years. Uh, anyway, really hard to read. We're going to go through the table of contents. Harris Desert Rhino, that's that one-of-a-kind 50 BMG caliber. Single shot rifle is first rates, so they're giving you the review right there in the table of contents. Smith & Wesson Model 317 Airlight. If there's a best overall trail gun, this 22 LR8 shooter is it, says the author. So yeah, they're just giving you the whole article. You don't have to read the rest of the thing. Then you got a folding travel bike, Motorola radios, solar power tracker, or uh, solar power packer, light force rifle scopes, First aid for sores, stock in your survival pantry, 10 deadly knife fighting sins, incredible edible island, so uh, it's interesting, blizzard basics, long term survival kit, exploring Ford's Explorer, is Ford tough the right stuff, oh my goodness, threat control, winter driving tips, and making an alcohol stove, this is why we got past 1999, in the early 2000s, and we don't have anyone that's interested in reliving those times. So we're going to keep going. Now we have an ad for Pilot and Press. Uh, all kinds of cool, better looking uh, covers and a better looking ad. But uh, here's a folding bike, travel bicycle. Interesting. We got some sort of emergency essentials. Some guy grabbing a little squirrel. We got a Benchmade, held to a higher standard, made in the USA. Maybe competing with Spyderco big time there. Got a Glock knife for 40 bucks. I remember the first time I got a Glock knife, I was not impressed. Got another ad from Major. Oh, this is all Major. Another ads from Major. We're going to be doing a deep dive on Major, because I think this actually might be a place I've been to. Um... Lots of different BDUs, and if it's the place I'm thinking of, that would make sense because they got them all. Next, we get into the new products, a whole bunch of new Spider Co's. We got some crazy vests from Adventure Vest, some kind of 
Ear Pro that's got crazy, weird, probably fragile electronics in it. Some kind of giant five, 500, half a million candor power spotlight. And then these Kenwood transceivers. Uh, let's see. Even back then I wouldn't have been interested in, in dedicated walkie-talkie type stuff, even from Kenwood. I mean, that's rugged and whatever. It'd be good for a specific uh, patrol or something, but uh, too useless. I'd rather have just plain old ham radios. Back in the day for sure. So next we get some CD-ROMs with technical manuals. I think I probably own a few of these, actually. They would put basically most of the military manuals on one CD and then give you another one with, like, all the other, all the weapons manuals or something for free. And let's see, a bunch of VHSs still, even though it's, uh, 1999. Got a Keltec P40. Oh, that's a little 40 caliber one. It's almost the same size as this 9mm one. What do you know? No, it's a 380. I wouldn't have a 9mm one. Uh, we got something from Nitro Pack. There's that Desert Rhino. Yeah, that's actually really, really cool. Really cool. It looks like you just uh, stack the round right onto the bolt, jam that all up into the little tiny stocky thingy there. So here's the 10 Denley Sins if you're knife fighting with this guy. Here's how you want to look when you're doing it. Peace, man. Hey, I just want to grab that off your back there, buddy. So then you start grappling with knives. And, you know, you didn't have to go to a fancy knife fighting school. You just get this magazine off the newsstands. Maybe practice with somebody on the bus or something. Uh, renewable energy for Y2K. There you go. You got some solar panels. You got a giant sodium light. Bam! Spetsnaz. All-purpose survival tool. Lifetime warranty. $69. $69. And then you go. Bam! $69. Bucks. And I paid more than $69 for that. But I have one. Look at this. Don't get scared. This is going to happen. This is how you're supposed to hold it, I think. So, do I look like I'm in the catalog? All right. I don't want to do anything. Oh, snap. I just noticed this guy's holding an AK bayonet. Uh, this just became one of my favorite magazines. This guy's holding an AK bayonet. Guess what somebody's cartooning this weekend? All right, so from now on I have a pointer. Next up, we got a thing about this guy and this helicopter. China Diesel Imports, we always saw this. Oh, snap, here's a little puppy thing. If I had these puppies, first thing I'm gonna do is go to this puppy, and I'm gonna rub that puppy's belly. Now you go up to these puppies, it's a little different. You gotta push them over and then rub their belly. They'll like it, and then you start playing with the puppies in some other way, I suppose. Uh, this is how to drift. Back in the day, we would just read a magazine. We didn't have to watch a movie or nothing. We would just say, oh, okay. And then we would know how to drift. Uh, this is a toilet from the year 2000. Uh, you would hook up a nitrogen tank to a five-gallon bucket, and you'd sit on there. And it was a little different in the 90s. Uh, you poop differently nowadays, I guess, because of you know, your fancy flush toilets. Oh, I thought that was an NAA. So... Is there really a perfect kit gun, trail gun, and this is it? Oh, well, really? What is it? 22 caliber? Yeah, really. Uh, then we got a Motorola Sport 10. Look, if you drop that in that terrain, you wouldn't even know where it is. And if you tried to radio to it, I guess that's what you'd have to do, radio to it. So this is, they're calling this a night vision scope. This, like, Gen 1 half from Russia, from Russia probably. Oh, snap. So now you can just get yourself a uh, crank operated uh, M2 in 50. No big deal. Right? And then you can get yourself a little 30 cal also. Because why not? No big deal. And you just crank. You don't have to get them full auto, just make them crank. Uh, the wedge. A little goofy knife. I never had one. Oh, sores and cuts. Back in the day, like nowadays, everybody uses your super glue or whatever. Back in the day, we just used Elmer's. Whatever, we didn't need your fancy super glue. Incredible Edible Island. 
Oh my god, they eat cats in Canada? What's going on? Do they? Is that a dog or a cat or some kind of hybrid and then they eat them? That's horrible. Canada's horrible. I didn't know. Alright, so um, this is a sharpener. It's interesting. You get some free oil with it. That thing costs 20 bucks. You can get these for like a buck now. So everybody's like, oh, the future is horrible. We live in a horrible future. Back then you would have to pay 20 bucks for a piece of plastic with two little pieces of ceramic in it that we pay a dollar for today. $20, $20 for a thing we pay a buck for today. And I'm sure you get these things for free if you go to the right knife uh, show. What is this? Land Rescue. Oh, cold steel. Interesting. Yuck. Look at that. Plastic clip. Plastic 30 caliber clip. No good. Don't even buy stuff like that. Oh, then we get that 22 they they're trying to sell us. Blizzard conditions. Nice old square cars. Back in my days, cars were square. Because we didn't care about your fancy weather or whatever. So uh, we made our cars look cool. Solar power packer. So this would have been a solar panel made out of tinfoil. It's a little different. You would take a potato chip bag and you'd open it up and you'd glue it with some Elmer's glue onto a piece of metal or wood or whatever. Hook it up to a cooler and boom. That was like that was our solar power back in the day. If you really wanted, you'd put some batteries in the cooler. So now you can win that fold-up bicycle, a whole bunch of Texas chili or a GPS. That was a deluxe GPS. It had a map in it already by 2000. I was probably, I was working at AOL at this point. I thought I was super... Uh, a head attack, so I'm sure I was uh, already scrolling around my CD-ROM GPS map thing on my Macintosh. Long-term survival kit is basically in his butt pack, so you know there was hip hip bags and then also butt packs. Nowadays, people don't put things in on their butt or in front of their butt. Uh, here's some more pictures of snow, just in case. You don't feel threatened already. Look what will happen. If there's snow, everyone will die in their cars. Those aren't Matchbox cars. Those are real people that all died because of the snow. Y2K is coming, so get ready. It's probably going to be like that prior picture. Survival nutrition. Mostly corn and arrowheads. No, corn and carrots. That's all you need. There you go. Oh, and then you got your... Healing techniques. Watch this. My hand kind of hurts. Oh, no, it doesn't. Learned that from a magazine. Homemade alcohol stove. Sweet. So you basically take a box from some soda cans and you wrap it around the stove and then that's your homemade stove. Sweet. So nowadays they make videos and stuff. Back then you would make an article and then you'd submit it to a place, and then they would edit it down and write a lot of stuff about it. And then take a couple of pictures and put it into a uh, magazine, right? And I'm almost positive that they never did that circa... What year is this? Circa 1984... Uh, if I was to look in here under cooking and, you know, find something with, like, three pictures and get the same thing. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I guess they didn't. But they could have if they had been thinking about it. They probably just didn't want us making our own little stoves. But anyway, that's what it was like. Nowadays, you just make a little one-minute video and put it on Instagram. So we got some gas masks. The Israeli gas mask was six. Dollars? Israeli civilian gas mask new with new filter six dollars. That's why I have so many of them, I suppose. Uh, then these were 175, these were 45, these other ones were 30, 12 for the youths, and so forth. Six dollars. Uh, let's see, then you got the Steve Arnold's gun room, has to be in there. More of that desert rhino. Man, I don't know why I never got that. I never seen a 50 BMG round at a gun show or anything, so I just never got antsy to get the gun, I guess, to wrap around it. At least I don't remember ever seeing a 50 BMG. Oh, with Survivalist Directory got a little fancier. I don't know if it's any bigger. 
How prepared are you? I've trained with most groups in my area, and I found special forces wannabes fooling the members into believing that they're prepared. I'm starting my own group, Real People, Real Training, Chicago, Illinois. Oh, well, if it says real twice, then it's real. You know that. Uh, this one just says USA. Small, dedicated group, seeking people willing to relocate to our remote retreat and work to prepare. Our goal is self-sufficiency and to raise our own food, etc. Yeah, no problem. I read that ad. I'm uprooting my life, and I'm living with these people. Done. All right, puppy. We're just moving. Hopefully, they're still there. Uh, let's see. We got some brass knuckles. Fourteen bucks. Uh, danger perception and assault prediction. Do not point a finger and make a sharp gesture towards an agitated person. Do not turn your back to an agitated person. Do not let yourself get cornered by an agitated person. It's all good, man. That's actually, you know, probably a lot of people don't think about stuff like that, so read that. What does it say? One, two, three, four, five. While it might seem the victim that road rage violence happens out of nowhere, all acts of violence follow predictable patterns. Being alert to the signs of a potentially violent incident may save your life or help you to avoid damage and injury. Again, uh, people that aren't really paying attention, if you let them know that there are cycles or sim sense, uh, signals, then at least it gives them something to kind of pay attention to and be aware of, right? Oh, this is interesting. Something about canning or finally prepping at the last two pages of the magazine. Oh, look at this. Somebody catching a pike. Nice. So, uh, somebody looking for some black bear tracks? Neat. All right. So, uh, that's from that Canadian island again where they eat cats or something. Got a couple of watches at the end, because we didn't have electric watches. And I guess that's about it. So we got to about 20 minutes again, checking out 1999, just before the uh, Y2K. Actually, January of 1999, so kind of the, you know leading up to. There was barely only one Y2K ad in this one. Might be interesting to look at one from like December 1999, or I guess probably... August of 99 to give people time to order and stuff would have been more interesting But we got them. We'll go take it out. So uh, with that we'll end this one. Give us some feedback I guess I will do one more long format one like this and then we'll have four of these and uh, We'll use the feedback on them to see if we should do more. There are a lot more in the pile Thanks for watching